welcome to the Productpreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Nicole DeLarzac, product development and marketing coach and mom of three. Learn from and get inspired by women entrepreneurs killing it in the product space. Each episode, we will share the latest trends, proven strategies, and inside secrets of the product world, all designed to give you greater confidence to create your own success through a product venture. Let's do this. Hey guys, I want to take a quick minute to share with you about the Product Launch Lab. I created a -a one-of-a-kind six-month online coaching program as well as done-for-you services that will take you from idea to launch. Through this program, we'll work together to come up with, develop, and market your product. You'll have my input, guidance, and support to rely on every step of the way. If you'd like more information, head on over to NicoleDelarzac.com and book a free strategy call to discuss your product idea. I'm so excited to introduce you to this guest today. Giovanna Aieo, or Gio for short, is a dear client of mine. A few months ago, she came to me with an idea that she couldn't let go of and wondered how to do something with it. We worked together and in a few months, she solidified her concept, developed her brand, applied for a patent, and is now at the prototype stage. She is on her way to launching a meaningful brand that's made for moms during their postpartum days. In this episode, we chat about how she got her idea to the stage where it's at and her advice for other women with a product idea. Gio is a doula, birth photographer, and founder of Mindful Mummy Doula Services and Mumdi's Maternal Underwear. By day, she is a mom to a busy four-year-old little girl who definitely keeps her on her toes. Giovanna's goal as a doula and entrepreneur is to help mothers all over the world be supported and cared for when they need it the most by putting moms first. Thanks so much for joining us today, Gio. I'm so happy you could make it. You are an amazing client of mine, and I'm so excited that uh, the audience will be able to hear your story. It's, It's amazing. Thank you for having me. Great. Well, let's start with if you could tell us about your background and tell us how you got to where you are and what led you to start your own business, because I know you have a business and then you've also started to develop a product. Yeah. So my first business that I do every single day is I am a birth doula. I'm also a birth photographer. So I started that business pretty much after my daughter was born. So I used to work in the the office nine to five kind of job all day long. And after the birth of my daughter, which didn't go as smoothly as I had planned, in quotations, Mm -hmm. she really inspired me to start my journey as a doula. So I did all of that training and growing my business while on mat leave. And it just grew from there. So I didn't end up going back to work. Uh, I went back for actually three months. And then I decided to quit and pursue growing my doula business. You know, doing this business every day. Um, really helped me to understand what moms need, what they look for, you know, the support that they need, which led me to creating my new business, which is a product um, for moms. They're called Mumbies, which are an eco-friendly disposable underwear for moms who are pregnant and or in labor and for postpartum as well. Amazing. Yes. I'd love to dig into this idea. So when you came to me, you first said, you know, I've got this idea that won't get out of my head. And we often, those are the Mm -hmm. best ones because we just obsess over them. We're like, oh, I can't find this anywhere and nobody's doing it. Mm -hmm. I've got to do it. So can you tell us about those first moments when you're like, oh, I've I've got this idea. Um, What was the problem you were solving and, and how come nobody's doing it? So I remember, you know, I attended quite a few births and I remember coming home and saying to my husband that, A lot of moms at the hospitals, they use these gigantic pads and these mesh underwear that seem to never fit anybody right. And they're not very comfortable. So I started recommending Depends, which are like a incontinent kind of underwear. And every time I mentioned this to one of my clients, their face would drop because they were like, you want me to wear a diaper? And I was like, yes, but it's very efficient, right? Because it, it absorbs a lot. So it's very functional for labor, but they never really quite fit right. You know, and just the idea of it, it's not, it's actually not made for women in, that are pregnant. So I remember mentioning it to my husband. I was like, how come there isn't anything out there like this? And he's like, well, if it isn't out there, then why don't you make it? And I was like, oh, that's a 
interesting idea. So <laughs> I, just, I did a lot of research to see if the product exists and it, it didn't. So I thought, okay, this is kind of interesting. So I decided to make it <laughs> something amazing. that's specific for moms. Right, right. It's, it's amazing because you, you have this idea, you have this problem that exists where people just didn't feel comfortable. And I know as a woman um, going through birth, I remember those times when you're super fragile and think products aren't made for women who've just gone through birth. It's just, there are like, it's more and more, but I find that I think in the earlier days, they, they didn't have products for postpartum women. So I think it's a brilliant idea. Can you tell us actually a little bit about the name Mumdies and what does it mean to you? How did you come up with it? So Mumdies literally is just mom undies meshed together. And I really just thought, I researched a few names actually, but honestly, this name, it like popped into my head, like literally while sleeping and woke up with it. And it kind of just like stuck in there. And it just made a lot of sense. And it's really cute. And I think it's very feminine. And Mm -hmm. it's just, it just very much suits moms and what they need the product for. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, so cute. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. And can you tell our listeners a bit about the process you went through to refine your product idea? Because I know when we started to speak, um, you were thinking about this idea, and there were some other products you thought might also meet the same need. So, how did you determine the right concepts? We call it a concept, so to speak. Yeah. So we did what we call, I guess, concept testing. So what we did is I had a few other ideas um, that. We wanted to see how moms would respond to my idea and get some feedback on it. So we did concept testing to about 30 or 40 moms. Mm -hmm. um, And it had, I think, four or five different products in it, different things like different styles of a disposable underwear, different kinds of pads maybe, just to get feedback on what works. And it actually came back pretty pretty well with with Mumdies. I think Mumdies actually... Mm -hmm scored really, really high in comparison to regular pads and things like that, or wearing disposable underwear for incontinence issues, you know? So it, it responded back really, really well. Nice. Moms. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. And I think we, uh, you were wrestling with the idea of, is it disposable or is it washable? Yes. Um, and yeah. that was something that we really went back to the feedback that you got yes. from the concept testing and, mm-hmm it was clear that, no, that this is a unique idea. It's disposable. And uh, as long as it's eco-friendly. It definitely came back. Yeah. With a disposable option, I think, especially during that time, you know, you Mm want to stay clean and hygienic and obviously we don't want to create more litter in the world. So we're trying to find an eco-friendly way of creating this product that doesn't create more waste but still can help with hygiene and cleanliness issues for moms. So they don't have to also do a bunch of laundry when they've just gave birth to a newborn baby at home. Right. That's perfect. Yeah. yeah I can imagine that's, that's a very sensitive time. Mm-hmm. So you want to look yeah. and feel your best. And sometimes yes. we don't want to be washing everything. So it's, it's so good. No. <laughs> um, and how did it, did it, did you feel surprised with any of the feedback that you got? Did it change your concept as a result? Actually, the feedback I feel like I got back was pretty much in line with what I felt anyway. Mm -hmm. So I didn't actually change a lot. I don't, I don't even really know if we changed much at all. Yeah. Kind of just, it pushed me forward more with a disposable version of this. Right. So it helped to solidify that. Right. It sort of validated what you thought and any yes. sort of questions that you had lingering made you feel more confident. I'd yeah. Say. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Good. And then we decided we designed the logo and initial look and feel. How did it feel to have a finished concept and brand guide? It was really cool, actually. It's like the first little baby step of seeing your product slowly start to come to life. And so, I mean, It was great. She did a great job and she pretty much, I think she nailed it on the first go, Rachel. Mm -hmm. She did such a good job and she just made it, you know, I just wanted it to be super feminine and light and like, you know, a nice little heart in it, like something just like the little loving extra care in it. 
And right. it, it was great. It was great to see it, you know, my whole brand story come to life. It was cool. Right. Yeah. Right. Sometimes it's super cool to just to see like all the things that you've written down or you've had in your head for so long and see it visualized is always exciting. I love that. Yes. And, um, and from there you decided to apply for a patent. So could you tell mm -hmm. our listeners why did you do this? Because we know it's an expensive proposition. Yeah. And so how would, and also how it would develop, help you develop your product down the road? Yeah. So I decided essentially to do the patent route first because I may be going up some really going up against some really big companies um, that may have similar designs. So I just wanted to make sure that I eliminate any future or minimize at least any future issues that I might come across with infringing on other people's ideas or patents. So yeah. the process of spending the money up front for a patent, I think protects me in the long run. So mm -hmm. this way, my idea actually it was kind of great because when I was doing the patent with the lawyers, they actually sketch it out and create a visual of what your product will look like, how it's going to be. So it really actually helped make the whole process that much more real. And mm -hmm. so submitting it, it takes a couple of years as well to go through. So it, it gives you time to slowly grow and develop your product and your idea while you're waiting. And this way in the end, when, when the patent goes through, I can say, 100% certainty that this is my idea, this is my product, and I could more safely launch it into the world, especially on a right. bigger scale, right. which is what I would hope to do in the future. So the patent for me was definitely the first thing I had to do. Yeah. And I know, I remember you were saying that if you were to go to manufacturers with this idea, you don't know who's going to take that idea and run with it as well. Yeah. Yeah. So before you were going to talk to manufacturers or investors or anybody, you wanted that safety of knowing that yes. you own the idea. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You got to right. be careful too. Yeah. Who you speak to, especially if you're going to be chatting with people in different countries, you don't know what's going to happen, mm -hmm. you know, with your idea. So it, right. I feel I, it was definitely the right first step for me. I also don't want right. to launch a business and get shut down. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, you know, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's so I just want to make sure a company I'm going to be going against some pretty big companies out there, which have a mm -hmm. lot of money and manpower. So I just need to make sure I'm right. Safe. Could you give listeners a ballpark of what ca that kind of investment can be? So essentially, the patent here in Canada anyway, um, and it is a utility patent. Um, so it kind of covers the design and function of the product. Mm -hmm. It was around 10,000 Canadian to do. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. And with taxes, everything, you know, it's around 11, 11 to 12,000. So definitely right. not cheap. No. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly. actually, and that actually is for the U S patent. So it is patented in the U S or patent pending at least. Got so it. essentially I'm still protected uh, with mm -hmm. patent pending right now which allows mm -hmm. me to still get out there and grow it a little bit. And I think it gives you credibility as well to say it's patent pending. Like yes. If you were to go to an investor, then they just take you a bit more seriously. Oh, you've actually exactly. invested so much money into the patent. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's, it's a big investment and it's not something to take lightly. It's, it's something that you want to be going into intentionally knowing all the positives and negatives of having a patent and whether or not it's really going to help your product and um, make sure that you are protected. I remember you actually created a mock prototype for yourself that guided the drawings for the patent. Mm -hmm. What was that I like? Did. It was fun actually to be kind of creative and like, because so far in the journey, I didn't have a hands-on prototype or anything, you know, that people could see, touch or feel. Mm -hmm. So I just decided mm -hmm. to make my own for now. I used like a glue gun <laughs> and I bought, I got like some pads and some depends, things like that. And I kind of constructed my own together. Um, and I covered it in a material, like a nice cotton material that is actually disposable as well, but super breathable just so you could get the feel for what I would like it to look like, the shape right. of it, so that it fits every mom's body and or belly super comfortably. So there's still, so I could actually show that it, it can still be cute and feminine, even mm -hmm. though it's got a functional process behind right. it. 
Yeah. So I think yeah. that's really great because it shows people that you can actually develop your own mock prototype. It's not like a final prototype, obviously, mm-hmm. but um, you can actually do that at your kitchen table with scissors and a glue gun mm-hmm. and um, think about how you want the function to be, how you want it to look. In a different <laughs> episode, we spoke with Jackie Dinsmore, who created a bag prototype with I think cardboard at her kitchen table just to get the idea of what the function would be. So it's just great that you can be creative and make your own mm-hmm. product uh, and then go to a designer or a manufacturer with that little mock prototype mm-hmm. and create yeah. something even bigger. So yeah, it's really cool. And you also yeah. change your design as a result because I remember you're going to have an elastic waist, I think, and then you made it a low cut. Yeah. Yes. I made a nice like V shape in the front because I thought that that would just fit everybody that much better than having right. a super high waisted underwear up to your chin, you know, things like that. So and yeah. making it in real life, actually, it did help quite a lot too really right. refine it and actually taking pictures of it and sending it to manufacturer, you know, so they could see what it actually get a better idea. Um, and with the patent drawings, it both together worked out really well, actually. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then you applied for the high five grant, which is a grant where you can win. If in, if you become the winner, you get $5,000 investment. This is when you went public with your idea. Can you yeah. tell us what that process was like and how did it feel to make your product idea public? Because you hadn't mentioned this product at all to people. And then suddenly you became a finalist <laughs> yeah. of the high five grant. <laughs> So I applied just just to try it out to see what happens. So it's obviously for mom-owned businesses that are trying to make it in the world. And I actually made it to the top eight, which I was very surprised that I made it that far with not an actual product yet, but it was exciting. And so I applied, made it to the top eight, which is probably out of like five or 600 different people. I actually made it. So that was cool. great. That's amazing. But then, you know, we had to do a whole lot of social media promotion behind it, posts, video, and I also had to have a website, which I did not have. <laughs> <laughs> so I essentially had to present my idea to the world in like a matter of a week. Wow. I think the whole thing was seven days. And it was a whirlwind. It was crazy, but it was a lot of fun. And I think I did get a lot of support, but I was up against other mom-owned businesses that were already existing in the world Mm -hmm. and already had sales and a customer base. So I I didn't, I think I placed like fourth or fifth, which to me is still pretty good. Like I was very happy anyway. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was great. It was a great way to like force me forward in the world with my idea. So it was definitely something I needed. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that you launched your Instagram and yeah, yes. your social media, and then you launched your website. I think you did that at night. You told me you stayed up late <laughs> and yeah. you created it at night. Yeah, uh, so it was so like cool. the last minute. She's like, oh, we need your website. And I was like, oh, you need a website. Okay, right. I'm going to. It was like 10 at night. It was launching the next morning. And I think uh-huh. I cried while creating this website. <laughs> Good thing I bought the domain ahead of time. You know, and I essentially got it all together just to have something for people to look at. Yeah. So they could see what the product is. But it went really well. That's amazing. (laughs) That's yeah. Great. Congratulations for even making it to the top eight and for getting your product out there into the world. That must have been scary. I know it's scary to talk about your own idea and to hear feedback from other people. Yes. I got a lot of good feedback. My Instagram you know, it's actually grown a lot on its own, which is great. So it seems mm-hmm. like it is it responds well out there, which is really good to know. For sure. I'm sure it yeah. resonates with moms. Currently, your next step is to get a prototype from a manufacturer and choose a manufacturer. Yes. So what are you planning on doing? How are you planning on doing this? And, and I know you're looking at raising funds as well. Can you tell our listeners about that? Yes. Next steps definitely to get the prototype made and the samples made. I am going to keep applying for grants, um, especially as they pop up. There's lots of different grants and fundings for women all over. So I'm going to you know, take that route. I'm also 
lightly exploring investors and Mm -hmm. things like that, which I know it can be a little challenging right now that I feel like I'm kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place trying to find investors, especially when you don't have a prototype yet. Mm. But I'm still going to put the idea out there and see what comes along. And then I'm also just working and saving money to go towards it because I need to, to get the prototype made. So far, quotes I have aren't super expensive. could be around $5,000 or so. So it's not a ton of money. Um, Mm -hmm. So I will get there slowly but surely, but definitely open to possible investors that just love the idea and want to help women be a little more comfortable and less vulnerable in their everyday life, especially after birth and things like that. Yeah. So if there are listeners out there that know of any grants or funding sources that could help Geo, I'm sure she would love to hear from yes, you. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> and please reach out to her. Yeah. yeah and uh, great. That's great. So what would you say were the biggest changes you experienced from us working together? Everything. I feel like I've never done this before at remotely at all. My first business, it was essentially me promoting myself, you know, not a product. So this is very different and it, it's a very big learning curve. And, but it, I've grown so much, I think, just as an entrepreneur in my first business. And this has just made that more, I guess. So everything is different. It's been an amazing journey. It's been extremely challenging at times because mm-hmm. I also have to put myself out there in front of the world. And that is nerve wracking. (laughs) Right. I have to convince people essentially to believe in me and my product. And that is very different too, right? It's just, Mm -hmm. yeah, it's challenging. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. And I think you've you've come so far because you started from just an idea and then you've tested things out, you've refined your concept. Now you just, you've got a working prototype or Mm -hmm. like a mock prototype. So now it's just developing the product which yes is yeah it's uh it's huge like from here then you've got so much further that you can go in terms of Mm -hmm. launching it and yeah so it's super exciting you've come so far I feel like I'm on the edge I'm just like on the cusp of the next huge step and I know once you know especially once I get this prototype done and some samples and I can start sharing it into the world a bit more I think it will just grow and snowball from there. So there's always a reason for everything. And I feel like maybe things are just slower right now, slower paced for a Mm -hmm. reason. And if that's waiting for the patent, you know, to finish going through things like that, then I'm okay with that, but I will get there. You will. (laughs) One step at a time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And, and uh, I know you're a mom as well. If you have any advice for other moms that they're running in their own business, what would you say? Pace yourself. We can't expect, I guess, everything to happen overnight. I know I personally have wanted to grow it really fast. And being a mom is the first job and everything else Mm -hmm. comes second to that. So I just say stick with it, you know, and take it one day at a time. And sometimes we have, we have a lot on our plates, I find, as moms and entrepreneurs and all those things. And we just got to juggle it and pace ourselves. That's, that's my best advice, I think. Mm-hmm. I think, yeah. yeah, especially this time during COVID where everyone's at home mm-hmm. and you've got your, your daughter is at home. My kids are at home. Yeah. I'm currently recording this in my son's room. I couldn't find another place to record it. <laughs> and we're just all doing our best. So yes. I think yes. just having patience with yourself is really important. Yes. Yeah. That's all you can do right now is just be patient. I know that throughout your journey, there have been ups and downs. And I wonder if you could just give some a guidance to our listeners who are also possibly developing their own product or in their own business and just uh, wondering, will there be a better day or how, how do I get through this? I feel like there are lots of ups and downs with this process of creating, finding the right people, the right manufacturer, things like that. It's challenging, but you really just have to stick it out and ride it out because 
one day you, you might not come up with a lot of answers or, you know, the answers that you want. And then the next day it's all laid out for you. So I just feel like you got to ride it out and keep moving forward. And I try my best to stay focused on Mumdies, even if it's on the back burner for a little bit, like always have it there to work on and to continue to move forward with. So Mm. definitely lots of ups and downs, but you just have to keep questioning, calling the people, emailing and pushing forward. I think Mm -hmm. that's mostly, that's all it is, is pushing forward. And if you feel like people don't get your idea or don't believe in it, then you just need to keep moving forward and find the people that will and that do. Right? Yeah. 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 That's so good. Yeah. Yeah. There's, because I find that there will be times where you're going to doubt yourself, you're going to doubt your idea. And I know you went through a bit of that. Yeah. One day you'd feel great on top of the moon and then the next you're like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I yeah. know, and and we all yes. have that. We have our own doubts, and I think it's more of a mindset thing. But definitely doing one step at a time and doing at least you know one mm-hmm. one intentional action for your business will get you through it. So yes. yeah, that's great advice. Are there, do you have any other tips for people who wanted to get started with their own product business? I think the best thing I did was was work with you first of all because. It was so overwhelming and I felt so lost and didn't know what to do at all to start a product-based business. So I think I saved myself thousands and thousands of dollars, you know, like (laughs) of making mistakes to work with someone who could guide me throughout the journey. It was like having someone to hold your hand and support you. (laughs) It's like having a product therapist. Oh, you know? that's amazing. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Great. You made my day. Oh, yeah. that's great. Like it definitely, I think was the best decision. I would, I would spend the money again, you know, just to have the, the guidance that came with it. It was very, very helpful. Yeah, oh, definitely. Thank you. Yeah. It was on an honor and a privilege. So thank you. Yeah. I really appreciate yeah. that. Oh, that's super. So, and uh, anything else that you'd like to add to help our listeners? If you have an idea and you think it's a good idea, you know, do your research and just try it out. Like what, at at the end of the day, you know, what is there to lose? You know, I feel like you learn a lot anyway um, throughout the whole journey. And, you know, if this one journey doesn't work out, I'm sure something else will, or it may turn into or evolve into something else that just helps you on your path. I think like me becoming a doula in the beginning, which was something I had always wanted to do, has led me here, um, which will hopefully, you know, create more of a solid foundation for me and my family in the future. And so, you know, one thing leads to another and I feel like it all happens for a reason. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't want to have any regrets either. So why not? Just yeah. get started. And so please, uh, can you tell us how people can find you and your your business, whether yeah. it's doula? I know you have a few things going on. So yeah. please tell us about that. So I mean, my business that I'm currently doing is Mindful Mommy Doula Services. Um, and that can be found at www.mindfulmommydoula.com. Um, Mumdies also has a bit of a website and or slash landing page right now, which is mumdies.com. And Mumdies can also be found on Facebook and Instagram. And it's also spelled M-U-M-D-I-E-S. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming. It's yeah. so nice to have this you. This is great. Thank you. Yeah. I can't Thank wait you. to see your product live in stores and uh, ready to go. So it maybe we'll be. have you back on the show when yes. that that happens and just launch it for you. Yeah, that'd be great. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Productpreneur Podcast. If you loved this episode, we'd be so grateful if you could take a sec to subscribe, share it, and review it on Apple Podcasts. Your review will help more women build their own dream product business. By the way, if you have any feedback, comments, or questions, email me at info at Until next time, keep dreaming up those product ideas.